And now, more of No Gods, No Guilt, read by its author, Dr. Stephen Yule. Chapter 5, Guilt and Responsibility When I was a young Catholic, I had no idea that perhaps the greatest immorality that any adult can curse a child with is to imply to that child that intellectual or logical contradictions are acceptable or possible. In these days of thrilling progress in truly marvelous human achievements, many have concluded that anything is possible. Not true. Anything that does not imply a logical contradiction is perhaps eventually possible. And even if a star as popular and determined as was Christopher Reeves titles his book Nothing is Impossible, we still must not accept the implication that logical contradictions are possible or acceptable. This would prepare the mind to tolerate a popular immorality that teaches that an innocent child is born in sin, flawed, less good than he ought to be from the very beginning of his life. In a rare news conference, July 30th, 2003, George W. Bush reiterated that old Christian teaching we are all sinners. Speak for yourself, George, but not for those of us who live true to our logical consciences. And please do not be so illogical as to call an innocent newborn child a sinner in need of rebirth. Religious guilt can undermine self-confidence. As a child learning to reason, did you have the ingrained feeling of needing God, grace, and forgiveness before you could be whole or good enough? Do you recall, perhaps, as you analyzed the situation a bit later, that you should not be held accountable for sins committed prior to your birth? Yet, at the intuitive and emotional level, if respected elders taught the need for baptism to wash away your original sin, did you think that, well, they must know what they're doing? So if you were like me in those early developmental days, you likely received the imposed impressions from pre-rational youth that you were somehow guilty and in need of saving grace and strength from God. Perhaps other youngsters just missed, ignored, or glossed over the meaning of such early Christian lessons. The sensitive, impressionable child who is paying attention could readily see himself as an inadequate and unsatisfactory person. Such a so-called guilty person commonly lacks self-esteem. Low self-esteem causes lack of self-confidence, and a person lacking self-confidence readily gives ear to the manipulative salesman of questionable programs from drugs to deities. Feeling insufficient and lowly, he feels the need to embrace some power higher than himself. As the naive and guilty follower with low self-confidence gets cleansed of his assumed sins, he joins the group of the assumed good and godly, and thereby acquires the increased strength of the crowd. Then, because he cares, he may join the army of those dedicated to helping others see the world as his reinforcing crowd sees it. After all, says the forgiven believer, look what religion and God did for me. I was lowly and lost, but now I am found. I was weak, and now I am strong. I was blind, and now I see. The old feeling of personal inadequacy is replaced with a very confident trust in a higher power, and the last state of that man may become worse than the first, if, as often happens, his mission now becomes helping others feel as guilty and dependent as he felt before his being forgiven by God. Another Christian bumper sticker comes to mind. Not perfect, just forgiven. This brings us to the important matter of guilt and responsibility. Personal Responsibility The notion of an individual taking full personal responsibility for his actions and their consequences is not overly popular today. Often it appears that no reasoning is too fuzzy, no excuse is too flimsy in attempts to duck or lessen personal responsibility for individual decisions. I blame the tobacco company for making me smoke their addictive carcinogens. My peers pressured me into getting drunk. 
The car company caused me to drive too fast. My parents gave me bad genes. I'm not really overweight, I'm just under tall. My teachers didn't care for me. Prejudice took away my opportunities. I belong to a disadvantaged minority group. I didn't know the fast food company heated their coffee hot enough to scald me. I didn't even know their hamburgers had fat in them. Those of you who do not resort to such excuses may feel the necessity to buy insurance protection against those who do. Most preachers would claim that mature personal responsibility is a high virtue. Is it fair, then, to wonder why those same preachers do not see that their teachings of guilt, prayer, and reliance on the gift of free divine grace can actually help many believers find more ways to duck personal responsibility? Many religious leaders argue strenuously that it is by faith alone, not by good works, that man reaches salvation. They can quote St. Paul to prove it to themselves. Legitimately dependent persons are appropriately less responsible than independent ones. So children are not expected to be as broadly responsible as our adults. Responsibility rests with those able to respond effectively, not with helpless little children. And yet a popular teaching of Christianity holds that unless you become as little children, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 18.3 this dependency attitude explains how children of God can often avoid responsibility. Children dependent on the Heavenly Father turn the hard stuff over to Him. One of my sisters demonstrates this really quite clearly. Though she is not my youngest sister, she definitely looks the youngest. Surely her ability to convince herself that it's in the hands of God has lifted a lot of big concerns from her shoulders. It is easier for the Christian scientist to pray for God to cure a child's deadly disease than to admit God's impotence or lack of caring by responsibly buying appropriate professional help. It is easier, short-term, to pray for a wayward or learning-impaired child than to work patiently oneself or to purchase appropriate help of others. To those who choose to pray as if everything depends on God and work as if everything depends on themselves, I say, one of the efforts is mostly wasted. Thinking, conscientious people do not tolerate such implied contradictions. I would encourage more confidence in oneself and more reliance on personal efforts and the help of trustworthy human beings. A big portion of modern society still believes that God will save man from himself, wash away his sins and personal inadequacies, cleanse his guilt, and deliver him into endless happiness. All you have to do is believe, they say, in the healing grace of your Redeemer. What a deal! In fact, the very common tendency to wish fulfillment makes it difficult for those who feel personally inadequate to resist such a Santa Claus type of a deal.